Okay, so this is a lecture video for Friday, February 19th. Uh, we're going to be talking about graphing lines. Before we get to that, I just want to revisit some simple concepts about equations. So let's just say I had something like this. Y equals really easy equation, 4 plus 2. Okay, well, it should be obvious, and I hope it is, that Y would equal 6. Okay, well, what if I said Y equals 7 plus 2? Well, I would hope that you would know that that means y equals 9. So if I give you a specific value for these guys here, like if I said y equals, again, we'll do one more, 11 plus 2, there's always just going to be one answer, okay, for what y can be. Now, things become a little different when I say, all right, well, now instead of giving you a value here, what if I just said y equals x plus 2? Well, you can't tell me what y is until I tell you what x is. If I said x is 4, you would tell me y is 6. If x is 7, then y is 9. If x is 11, then y is 13. But you cannot tell me what y's value is unless you know what x's value is. So what if I said I want to know all the solutions to this equation, all xy solutions to this equation? Okay, the problem is, well, you could start listing them. You could say, all right, well, let's say, well, what is X? Let's just start listing a bunch of values for X and Y. So I'll say, all right, well, if X is 0, that means Y is 2. If X is 1, that means Y is 3. X is 2, that means Y is 4. And you keep going, 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 going. But we're missing an infinite number of, of values here. We're missing all the decimals. We're missing all the negative numbers. So it's impossible to list all the XY combinations all the xy combinations of this equation. So the only way, besides this equation, that you can represent every solution to this thing is by using a graph. So we're going to use a graph that, that looks like this. You've probably all seen it, hopefully, at some point. Looks like that. It has a couple key components to it. It has this vertical line here, which we call the y-axis. It has this horizontal component here we call the x-axis. Where they cross is this middle point. This is called the origin. And we're going to use this to represent all the solutions to this equation. So every single point on this graph can be represented by a coordinate. I mean, think of it like a, like a battleship board, if you ever played battleship. So the horizontal distance from the origin will be our x value. And the vertical distance from the origin will be our y value. All right, so if I have a point, let's say I have a point that goes over 4 and up 7. That's going to be the point 4, comma, 7. Okay, that represents a quarter that's 4 points to the right of the origin, 7 points above. If it's something to the left, that would just be a negative x value. So if I have something that's 3 points to the left and... Uh, three points down, that would be the point negative three, negative three. Okay, so I can start listing. I'm going to list this combination of x's and y's. Let me use red here. So I know that the point zero comma two is a, is a solution to this equation. So I'm going to go over zero, so stay where I am, up two. That's a point right there. I know the point one comma three goes it satisfies this equation. So over 1, up 3, I get a point right there. Over 2, up 4, I get a point right there. And if you keep graphing these points, you'll see that it's going to end up making... This is going to go below this. This is a little too high. Let's erase that. It's going to end up making a line. So I can connect these points. Let me connect them with a red line. So this line has an infinite number of points on it, right? There's no breaks in it. So every single uh, point on the line is represented. And we use these arrows to say it goes forever in both directions. So this line represents every single point that satisfies this equation. So unless you want to use the equation, the only other way to show this, this relationship between X and Y is by using the line. 
Okay, so we're going to talk today about how to translate these equations into lines. All right, we're going to start off with a very simple process. So there's two ways we're going to talk about doing it. The first one's going to be graphing lines by plotting intercepts. But before we do that, I just want to talk about what is an intercept. Okay, let me switch back to blue. An intercept is going to be where this line, so let me just, um, I'll get rid of this line here, actually. Let me backpedal a little bit. Get rid of that. Let me erase these guys. Let's have a clean graph. So let me just draw a new line here. I'll just draw it like this. Boom, like that. That's my line. Doesn't matter what the equation is. That's just my line. So the intercepts are where it crosses the axes respectfully. So this is where it crosses the x-axis is the x-intercept. And where it crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. Okay. Now, what do we know about those points? Well, at the x-intercept, notice it's never going to go up or down. It's always just going to go over, left or right. And since it's on the x-axis, its y-value is going to be zero. The x-intercept, the y-value is going to be zero. Okay. So we always know no matter what the x-value is, we'll just call it x. The y value here is always going to be zero. Okay. And then the reverse with the y. No matter what the y value is on the y intercept, notice it's all, it's above the origin, so the x value is going to be zero. It doesn't go over left or right. So we're going to use that property to find intercepts of an equation and graph it. So let me type this out, make it a little easier. So we have here, I'll do it in, we'll say 20 font. All right, step one, we're going to let x equal 0, then solve for y. If it's not clear, I'll show you in just a second what that means. So we're going to take our equation, replace x with 0, and then solve for the remaining variable, which is y. After we do that, we're going to do the opposite. Let y equal 0. Then solve for x. This will give us two coordinates, namely the intercepts. Last step, very straightforward, is just connect the two points. That's all you have to do. It's a fairly straightforward process. Okay. Actually, let me slide this down. I want to add something. So before you copy all that, I'm going to change this. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to use this. This will make this two, make this three, make this four. I'm going to use this, this technique when the equation is written in standard form, standard or general form, it's sometimes called. What does that look like? That's like this AX plus BY equals C. So when our line is written in something times x plus something times y equals something, then I will graph it using intercepts. If it's not written in that form, if it's written in this form, which is slope-intercept form, we're going to use a different technique. Okay? But once we have we established it's in this form, we're going to use this technique, and it's very, very easy. So uh, I'm just going to change this equation because this is not in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's, uh, I'm just going to change this entire equation altogether. Let's just do this. I'll say, all right, we have 4x plus uh, 3y equals 24. That's my equation, okay? Scratch that one out because I don't want to, we're not going to, Graph that using intercepts. We're going to use a different method for that guy. So I'm just going to change the equation. No harm, no foul. So now it's in standard form. So the first thing I want to do is let x be 0 and solve for y. So let me do it in a different color. So I'm going to say, all right, let x be 0. I'll write this out. Eventually, we'll, we'll make this much quicker, but I'm just going to write it every single step. Let x be 0. So I'm going to rewrite my equation when x is 0. So I have 4 times 0 plus 3y equals 24. 
So I have four times zero. That's just going to go away. So this whole thing just becomes 3y equals 24. So when I solve for y, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'll get y equals 8. So that means when x is 0, y is 8. Or, in other words, the coordinate 0, 8 is on my graph. Okay? That is going to be, since I, I let x be 0, this is the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. Whatever intercept you're looking for, you let the other thing be zero. So there's our y-intercept. Now I'm going to let y be zero. And I'm going to solve for x. So I have 4x plus 3 times 0 equals 24. This just goes away. So I'm left with 4x equals 24. Solving for x, divide both sides by 4, I get x equals 6, which means when y is 0, x is 6. So this translates to the point 6, 0. And this is going to be, believe it or not, the x-intercept. So I have two coordinates, and the two coordinates determine the line. So I'm just going to take those two values. Let's do this in, I guess, purple, whatever. Plot these two coordinates. Over 0, up 8. Over, starting from the origin. Over 0, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there. 6, 0. I'm going to go over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that's it. Connect those two points. So let's get uh, purple. Take this guy and down to here. And I will draw my arrows. Always draw your arrows. And that's it. That line represents all the values, all the x, y values that satisfy this equation. So you can fill in this box if you want. It doesn't really matter. The x-intercept is 6, 0. Y-intercept is 0, 8. All right, that's as straightforward as it gets. It's not going to change. Pretty easy stuff. Only thing that might change is you might get decimals or negatives, but it doesn't really affect the process at all. All right, this one again is really ugly. So I don't understand why he chooses to write these ugly examples here. So I'm going to change this one again. So let's just do this. Let's say, hmm, let's think of a, of a really good question. So I'll say, all right. Well, I'm going to copy one from the homework page because I want to make sure it's actually worth doing. Well, I'll just make one up. It's not perfectly pretty, but I wanted to just show you the process doesn't change. So we'll cross this guy out. Instead, we're going to do 3x. Don't mind the sound of my washing machine in the background, if you can hear it. 3x minus 9y equals 21. Okay, let's just change the equation to that. It's a much more meaningful example. And my have a math one. I'll give you these ugly, ugly decimal ones to do. So don't worry about that. Um, okay, so we know it's in standard form or general form. So the first thing I'll do is let x equals 0. So I get 3 times 0 minus 9y equals 21. Again, this 3 times 0 is just going to go away. Eventually, you'll just say, all right, well, I can just cover this up. When I let x be 0, I'm just going to just solve for the other term. So I get negative 9y equals 21. So I'll divide both sides by negative 9. And I get y equals, it doesn't matter if you get decimals, they're completely acceptable. It's going to be negative, uh, oops, let me change that, 21 divided by negative 9. 
So I get negative 2.3 repeating. So we'll just do negative 2.3, the bar on top to show that it's repeating. Doesn't matter, it's roughly negative 2.3. So that gives me the coordinate 0, comma, negative 2.3 repeating. Now we'll do the other way. We're going to let y be 0. So I'm left with 3x minus 9 times 0 equals 21. Again, this goes away. So we have 3x equals 21. Dividing both sides by 3, I get x equals 7. So when y is 0, I get x equals 7. So I get the coordinate. 7, comma, 0. Now we're just going to graph those and connect them. So 7, comma, 0. I'm going to go over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you get confused as to which one means which, remember you have to go over the ladder and then up or down the ladder. So this is always left and right. This is up and down. So I have this 0 0.70, and then the point 0, negative 2.3 repeating. Here's 0, so I'm going to go down negative 1, 2, and about a third. Negative 2.3 repeating, you can just eyeball it just like that. That's about negative 2.3 repeating. Then we're going to take our line and connect them. Like that, and like that and then just draw our arrows and that is the line of this equation every point on that line is going to satisfy that equation you can pick a point that you know falls on this line and plug the values in for x and y and it will make this work okay pretty straightforward stuff the process is not going to change all right now, let's take a break and talk about vertical and horizontal lines, the difference between those and what those look like. So this just says plot the points 3, 1, 3, negative 2, and 3, 5. So I'm just going to real quickly plot those two, those three points. 3, comma 1, that means over 3. 1, 2, 3. Up, whoops, sorry, I'm over that. 3, comma 1. Oh, I want to erase that first. 3, comma 1 means over 3. Up 1. There's 3, comma 1. 3 comma negative 2 is over 3, down 2, that's right there. 3, 5 is over 3, up 5. I think that's that. Yep. So notice all three of these lines fall on the same vertical line, like that. So basically what I'm saying is I don't care what the y value is. The only restriction I have on this line is that the x value has to equal 3. Basically, if I said plot all the points on the graph such that the x value equals 3, you would just plot every single point on this line. You would say, okay, uh, 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 3 comma 3.5, 3 comma 3.3, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 4.2. All the, all the points you can graph where the x value is 3 will make up this line. So basically, that means that Vertical lines have the form x equals some number a. So when you see x equals a number, that it signifies that that's going to be a vertical line at that number. x equals 3, vertical line at x equals 3. Okay? Now, the opposite. If I have all the points where I just want the same y value, I want the point 5, comma 2, that's going to be here. 4, comma 2, that's going to be here. Negative 3, comma 2, that's going to be here. If I plot all of the points that have the same y coordinate, I'm going to end up with this line, a horizontal line, because the only restriction I have on this is that the y value has to equal 2. X can be anything, 
but y has to be 2. So if I list all the coordinates where the y value is 2, I'm going to get that line. So what does this mean? Well, this means horizontal lines have the form y equals b where b is just going to be some number. So if you see y equals 7, it's going to be all the, the, the dots or coordinates that have a y value of 7, horizontal line at 7. All right? So what we can remember is, is I learned this in high school. It's pretty stupid, but it does help. If you remember the, the, the word vux, vux hoi, vux hoi. This says vertical lines have a slope that is undefined. We won't talk about that right now. And they have an equation of x equals. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0, and they have a, an equation of y equals. So just know horizontal and y go together, vertical and x go together. We'll talk more about the slopes um, when I see you on Monday. All right, here's just another example. All right, it says... Uh, Change this. Craft the lines y equals negative 2. y is going to signify a horizontal line. Or you can just start saying, all right, plot all the points where y is negative 2. So you're going to get a, a horizontal line at negative 2, just like that. Okay? Graph the line x equals negative 4. You're going to plot all the points where x is negative 4. You're going to get a vertical line at negative 4. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay? The last thing we'll talk about before we go is what happens if the equation's not written in standard or general form? What if it's written in slope-intercept form, the most popular of all the forms? This y equals mx plus b. This is called slope-intercept form, equation of a line. <coughs> Sorry. The coefficient of x, which is called m, is the slope. I don't know why we use m for slope. I have no idea. And the point 0, comma b is the y-intercept. They straight up give you the y-intercept, okay? So you don't have to plug in anything to get that. It's in the equation. So the slope and y-intercept are easily identified because the given slope is the given line is in slope-intercept form. So it's really straightforward. So here's two examples to identify the slope and the y-intercept of the equation of the line. So looking at this guy here, the slope, we're going to call m. I don't know why, but m means slope is the coefficient or the number in front of the x. So my slope here is going to be negative 3 over 4. All right? That's it. It's just the coefficient of the x. My y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, and it's the thing we're being added or subtracted from x. This is going to be 0, comma, negative 5. So that's all I need to graph this line. Okay, but before we do that, I want to just, re just revisit something we learned about slope. Slope, in this particular case, is negative 3 over 4. But maybe with the first time you learn slope, you learn that slope also means something like this, rise over run, which can also be referred to as the change in x. We'll call it change, I'm sorry, change in y over the change in x. Maybe you learned a formula for slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll touch on that later, but this is what I'm looking at right now, rise over run, which means that if, I, if I'm on a point on this line and I want to get to another point on the line, I'm just going to use a rise of negative 3 and a run of 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is always, when it's in slope-intercept form, is start by graphing the y-intercept. So I'm going to go to 0, negative 5. 0, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. There's my y-intercept. And then from that point, okay, from this exact point, I'm going to use my slope to find a second point. So my slope is negative 3 over 4. So from here, I'm going to rise negative 3 or go down 3. 1, 2, 3. And my run is 4. So I'm going to go over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my second point. 
and I can just connect those with a line. So let's go like that. Try and make this as good as possible. Okay. All right, so what is so some people often ask, all right, well can I I can write the slope like this, but can I also write the slope like this? M equals three over negative four. Yeah, negative three over four and three over negative four are the same thing. You're gonna get negative 0.75 no matter which one you do. So these two things are the exact same. But what if I use this slope to graph the line? Well, I still start at my y-intercept, which is zero negative five, right there. But if I use this slope, my rise is positive three. So I'm going to go up three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to go a run of negative four. So I'll go left four, one, two, three, four. And you'll see, the line's not perfect, but you'll see that the, the point still falls on the line. So it does not matter which slope you use. Either one of these is fine. I just tend to keep the negative on top, but... It's totally up to you if you want to keep the negative on top or on bottom. All right. Let's try another one. So here we have y equals 4x plus 5. So my slope is the coefficient of the x, which is 4. All right. This might seem weird, but if there's no denominator, we can just add. This is going to be 4 over 1, which is the same as 4. doesn't change anything. And my y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, 5. So now I can start at my y-intercept, 0, 5. It's over 0, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From there, I'm going to go, my rise is 4, run is 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 rise, run is 1, right there. Connect those two points. And grab that. Not perfect, but good enough. And we have arrows on the ends. And that's it. That's the, the graph of the line. Okay. All right. Example four says Mr. McNabb started a lawn mowing business for the summer. He bought a lawnmower for three fifty and charged six fifty an hour. The equation relates to profits and hours work. What is the slope of this equation? doesn't change anything if we use a P and H instead of an X and a Y. Slope is still the coefficient of this variable here. So the slope is 650. And my P intercept instead of my Y intercept because we're in P and H is 0, comma, negative 350. I have a boring example there. All right. Okay, so that kind of uh, wraps up this section. I don't think you should waste your time on these. Most of these are pretty ugly. I don't know why they chose such horrible examples. I have to update the, these notes and give you better examples. But if you'd like, um, at this point in time, you should be able to, if this loads, there we go, start completing problems in the sections graphing lines okay you should be able to start doing some of these problems i'm not sure if you can do all of them but start giving them a, a, a shot over the weekend and then monday we'll talk about any questions you have um try your best to try and graph uh if it asks you to graph try and use the tools to graph stuff it can be a little tricky i'll show you one real quick let me see if i can find one where we have to solve it and graph a lot of these just ask you to find the x and y intercepts, which you can do pretty easily. Here we go. Okay. So let's do it. Actually, let's do a different one. Ah, okay, perfect. So this says use the intercepts to graph the equation. Even though this says use intercepts, we're not going to use intercepts because this is in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start at the y-intercept, which is negative 3. So 0, negative 3 is where I'm going to start my line. Okay. So I'm going to cl click the line button. So it's weird how this works. You're going to click on the y-intercept, which is negative 3. And then it immediately wants you to find a second point. Okay. So if you look, the slope is 3 or 3 over 1. So from this point, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 
three over one. Click, and that's it. Okay, that's all you have to do. And then here it says the x-intercept, enter as a coordinate. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. So we can use our parentheses, and we can say, well, that's the point 1, 0, like so. That's this point. And my y-intercept, we'll do it again, is going to be 0, comma, negative, negative 3. All right, let's see if that works. Perfect. Okay, but maybe practice this because this can be a little tricky, especially when the questions get a little bit more difficult. But uh, besides that, you can email me any questions you have over the weekend, and we will talk more on Monday when I see you then.